uh, presentation is entitled Participatory Natural Resource, Wetlands, Watershed and Forest Management. The presenter is uh, Dr. Shafi Nur Islam from University of Brunei Darussalam. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. From Brunei. <clears throat> Dr. Okay, please thanks. set your camera. Your only face is visible. Please set your camera. Is visible? Oh, oh yeah, it's good now. Looking nice. Okay, thank you very much. Can I share my slide or just? Sure. <clears throat> Can I start? Sure, please start your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, dear respectable chairpersons of these uh, sessions and the audience. And thank you for offering me to present something based on the participatory natural resource, especially the wetlands, watershed, and forest management. Uh, the, I base uh, on this uh, title, so the long title as a three issues, but I will try to sum up <clears throat> to give some result in based on this present scenario on the different parts of the world. Based on these are uh, my um, topics, I would like to introduce uh, shortly and then would like to say the objectives. Natural resources, uh, particularly wetlands, watershed and the forest, I would like to sum scenario at the moment the uh, all over the world in different particular uh, case basis and participatory management what is a lot of theories but i will give some my my own <coughs> experience and propose some model two models of participatory management or integrated management and uh, finally the, um, the concluding some remarks please click your presentation mode on the yeah. bottom of your slide, you click the presentation mode. Okay. I think uh, this uh, based on this uh, uh, my topics. Uh, the objectives of these uh, lectures is to it. It is an interdisciplinary overview of physical, ecological, and cultural aspects of a wetland, watershed, and the forest ecosystems intended for participants measuring in different uh, discipline as well as the physical life or social sciences with an interest in wetlands, watershed and the forest environment and uh, their resources. The specific objectives of this uh, lecture is to provide students or the participants with a clear understanding <coughs> of uh, the principles and the science of wetlands, watershed and the forest and a acquainted them with a fundamental scientific basis for their management based on solid knowledge and understanding of their, their ecological ecosystems and socioeconomic foundations and participatory natural resource management process. And based on this, we can introduce uh, the, I will talk about the, the wetlands and the watershed. Actually, wetlands is a very, uh, uh, not a very strong uh, old issues. Recently, is very getting very popular as it is important in part of the ecosystem. So, wetland under, uh, understanding concept in different parts of the world. People saying wetland, wetland it is a wetland actually, but it is a very valuable resources in the nature. Wetlands constitute a part of human heritage. It has a played a significant role in the development of a human culture and society. Moreover, it contains a very rich components of biodiversity of local, regional, and, re and national and regional significance. They also provide a habitat for a variety of residents and the mi uh, migratory waterfowl, waterfowl and significant number of endangered and commercial species. It is important to trace that uh, economic valuations uh, is not a, a 
panacea for the decisions since uh, it uh, represents uh, just the one input of the decision making process. Wetland include the world heritage sites with the significant values of ecological, biological, geological, limnological, and hydrological setting, including such a phenomena as thermal features and un underground rivers. Dr. Islam, please uh, do your uh, uh, presentation uh, bigger. Use your slide share. Okay. On the right side of the display, you can, can you some. can you see it now? Yes, it's okay yeah. now. Okay. Thank you. Fine. So okay, based on this, I think understand about one is the definition. What is the wetlands? Most universally accepted definition has been set by the Ramsar Convention. Wetlands include a wide variety of the habitats such as uh, marshes, peatlands, floodplains, rivers and lakes and coastal areas such as uh, salt marshes, mangroves, seagrass, beds, but also coral reefs and other marine areas no deeper than six meters at the low tide, as well as a human-made wetlands such as um, the wastewater treatment ponds and reservoir also could be the wetlands. This is in, in general definition accepted and all over the world we are using this. It is uh, coming from Ramsar Convention. So others and uh, the uh, distribution of the wetlands, actually wetlands are distributed uh, and eventually throughout the different climatic zone of the world because of the difference uh, differences in geologic climate and the sources of the water. These are the main region by the some areas wetlands is a huge, some areas is a no wetlands, some areas very little wetlands. They occur the widely diverse setting ranging from coastal margin, coastal margin, so where tide and the river nature's are primarily source of the water to high mountain valleys where rain and snow melt are the primary sources of the water. Marine and saline uh, wetlands are found at the coastal states of the world. Estuary wetlands are most uh, uh, plentiful to the coastal region of the world. Especially the uh, spatial distribution of the different wetlands type, vegetation compositions, and the soil types, and primarily geology, topo topography, and the water source and the climate issue, which is important issue over there. So globally, we can see this map at the distribution pattern of the wetlands in the different parts of the world, because some parts, especially the North Europe and the Eastern Europe, <coughs> especially the Russian the Northern part is a huge of wetlands. And then on the other hand, the middle of the world, especially the Middle East and the Asian region, very less of wetlands, as well as the South American regions and also the Australian, not the coastal wetlands, but in the Middle East, no, west, no wetlands. So globally, actually, um, the more than 6%, 6 to 8.6 million square hectare, million square kilometer of the land made up the wetland, which is a remarkable uh, re remarks. So over 56% of wetland found in the tropical and subtropical region, actually this middle of this world. So, and the other hand, the largest wetlands are distributed in different parts of the world. The 10 major wetlands in the world we found, such I'm not explaining all things, only the list is here, the Pantanal. This is the largest wetland in the world, 140,000 square kilometers. It's, a, uh, it is a dominating uh, the territorial part of the Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay. And this uh, Sundarban mangrove wetlands, Bangladesh and India, it's a covering 10,000 square kilometer, the mangrove wetlands. And we have similarly others are over Gango Delta wetland in Botswana, Everglades of Florida, wetlands in Florida, Kerala black water in India, Kakadu wetlands in Australia, Mekong Delta wetlands in Vietnam, and the EC Mangaliso Park in the South Africa, Wasur National Park in Indonesia, and such a distribution of the yeah, different part of the world is a distributed is a wetland. The yeah. GBL, excuse me. Okay, I think I am hearing some sound. Uh, I don't know what you say. 
GBM per catchment, this is Ganges uh, Brahmaputra Magna, del, uh, Mel, Magna River catchment area. So this area, we can see the GBM catchment area, uh, almost 1.6 uh, uh, million square kilometer. This was also the uh, use of wetlands. And in Bangladesh, actually, uh, the Ganges Delta, this is a 1.6 million square the delta area, it is also the wetlands and coastal wetlands as well as the freshwater wetlands. And uh, I think a wetlands in the different types of the wetlands are available, a classification. This is a IUCN uh, has a defined to total 39 categories of wetlands in the basis of the biological and physical characteristics, which uh, 30 are natural and uh, nine are the man-made. Based on the other way, they are general classification, the saltwater way, wetland and the freshwater wetlands. And the broader concept of the three classification, these uh, the Palestine wetlands and Lacustines of wetlands, these types of wetlands also classified and difference of way subcategories also possible. And uh, wetlands also not on the flat plain or the uh, delta area, but also we can uh, see the, the, the terraces uh, landscape and the wetlands in the some mountainous uh, countries. This is especially available in the Indonesia, Malaysia, and the, uh, Thailand and Vietnam, this area, some types of terrace uh, uh, type of uh, wetlands that's a huge in for the paddy field and paddy uh, cultivations also happening. So on the uh, last two, it says uh, why wetlands? Why so important? The wetlands have provided the fundamental ecological services and the regulation of the water design and sources of biodiversity at all levels, species, genetics, and ecosystem. Wetlands constitute a resource of the great economic, scientific, cultural, and recreational value for, this, for the community. Wetlands play a vital role in climate change adaptation and mitigation. Progressive uh, encroachment uh, on the loss of wetlands cause the serious, sometimes uh, irreparable environmental damage of the provides uh, of the ecosystems services. And the wetlands are also playing a potential role for the food security. So this is why wetlands is important. Now this important, uh, based on this uh, important of the wetlands, Ramsar Convention came under uh, patronized the United Nations 1971. So wetlands are needed to recognize uh, the category uh, and the criteria based on the Ramsar Convention 71. It was uh, 1971, 2nd February. So based on this Ramsar Convention, we have uh, almost uh, 200 sites are already declared as a Ramsar Convention, Ramsar wetland site. And it is a uh, 2nd February, so it became the World Wetlands Day. Now the uh, new uh, generation of the academic world are following the 2nd second, second February as a World Wetland Day. So some cases we can see the uh, watershed and the wetlands in Germany. One of the uh, good example for the wetland conservations uh, and uh, the watershed uh, maintaining in uh, Germany. So, but on the other one, we can see the watershed in the map on the left side, we can see the one of the, uh, it is in near to the uh, east side of Berlin. Uh, Cot was nearly, Cot was 100 kilometer south of uh, Berlin area, where I was uh, the student such uh, a long time in, in Germany. So this was, we had our observ observation of field at the wetland. This is one of the uh, properly managed uh, wetland case in Germany. On the other hand, the same uh, another case, it is a very another uh, 100 kilometers south in Germany due to the climate change impact. This was uh, one of the good, uh, some years before it was the uh, good category of the wetlands. And now it is also the endangered because of the climate change and the human influence on that. So these types of uh, case is happening all over the world, not only the Germany. Germany also they have this good case. On the other hand, it is also the very uh, bad case of wetlands. We can see the Sampa mega cities, uh, urban wetlands. This is one of the uh, wetlands we can say that Dhaka, the mega city. Actually, I'm from uh, Dhaka city. So we can see actually it was the the uh, main, main city, center of the city, say Gulshan. Very aristocratic people are living in this area. This is the river, Kalu River. And this other side, we can see the very high class people are living. And this is a river, which is also one kind of uh, part of this wetland. The wetland also could be static, 
wetland could, um, uh, could be dynamic, wetlands could be seasonal, wetland could be um, the block area. So this is also some uh, kind of wetland, but the slum already, this is unplanned slum already developed over there. So this character on the other, other side behind this also similar, people are um, uh, for not following the rules uh, or the plan for the urban development plan, but it is becoming uh, the destroying the wetland and reducing the wetland. So Dhaka or some other cities, uh, big uh, mega cities, actually they are just um, losing this wetland because of this not a strong plan for the wetland conservation issues. So this is one of the examples. Now we can uh, talk about can uh, talk about the mangrove wetlands, so the tropical and the uh, uh, forest wetlands. Actually, 14.8 million hectares globally. The areas are the recognized as the mangrove wetland. So this is the range of the mangrove wetlands, and actually three location in the specific region. This is hotspots of the mangrove wetlands, and uh, this is Atlantic, and uh, also the um, uh, Pacific and the Atlantic in the middle of the South America and the uh, North America in between. This is also the hotspots of the mangrove area. But uh, some of these countries actually are facing the huge problem for the mangrove. Forty percent of mangrove already destroyed uh, due to the uh, from 1960 to 70s for stream cultivation. So grow more food or food security issues. A lot of uh, mangrove already destroyed. And now again, it's a coming uh, the mangrove. It is the uh, it is the belt in the coastal area to protect the natural resources as well as human resources over there. Every and the most part of the world are facing the problem for cyclone and uh, and uh, tornado these types. So mangrove it is a one of the uh, good example can protect uh, this uh, coastal area. So, but it is already, uh, we lost already uh, more than 45 persons. So we can see the, what is the mangrove wetlands in the all, all over the world conditions. Actually, uh, actually the, the South and the Southeast Asia covered in the 42% of mangrove and the East Africa and the Middle East is only 6% mangrove and Australia covering 10%, West Africa 15%, and uh, America, South, um, uh, in the both part of the America, South and West, um, uh, North America, covering 27%. And the personal at the country, highest and uh, highest percent uh, covering the Indonesia, Brazil is the 7%, and Australia is the 6%, Nigeria, India, Bangladesh is covering also the 3%, and Papua New Guinea, 3%, and others, all other countries covering the 34%. And the total, it is a 14.8 million hectares of the mangrove wetland. It's also playing a potential role for the coastal people, as well as uh, the, it is ensuring the food security the, for the use of people living in the coastal area. Again, coming to Bangladesh, the Sundarban case. The Sundarban is the largest mangrove at this together, 10 square kilometer and, uh, with the, between Bangladesh and India. So this part is the Chundarbans, the Bangladesh part, other side is the Indian part, the Chundarbans. And the famous is the Heritria formes. This is a unique uh, aspect, a unique character, the outgrowing roots. And uh, the, uh, uh, these types of plants that are available, this is also playing for the potential role for the mangrove ecosystems. So now it is in uh, some cases, uh, it is also threat in different parts of the world. Inter Bangladesh also not a very different because uh, some part, also reducing because it's mangrove area are using for the special type of landscape. That means the stream cultivation is happening. So this is also the new threat everywhere in the Bangladesh, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia. They also see similarly after 70s, the huge stream cultivation is started. And also this is also the another threat for the, the stream, uh, for mangrove wetlands. So another, another threat is for the climate change. Climate is a sea level rise and the salinity intrusion. In this Sundarban case of the Bangladesh coast, this is the, the model showing uh, this high salinity intru, uh, increasing uh, to the north direction, where is the agricultural land is available. So it is also damaging the fertility of the agricultural land. So that's uh, wetlands, it is another threat for the food security. Ganges, uh, Brahmaputra, Magna reverse mouth, which is uh, the 
the Bay Area, this is also the wetlands or the coastal wetlands. And there is a huge uh, mangrove areas also this area, but uh, it is also the threat for the climate change issues, sea level rise and this high salinity intrusions, as well as a uh, Sundarban area as a threat for the tourism. As every day, 70,000 people are entering in the Sundarban areas for as a, these are all our tourists, international tourists, and uh, as well as the, uh, the indigenous people, they are also sometimes settling inside the Sundarbans. They are uh, collecting the resources, natural resources, and again, that they are migrating from other places. This character, this scenario can be seen in different parts of the wetlands area, Asia Pacific region, as well as Africa and the South American wetlands, mangrove wetlands, as a similar uh, scenario, we can see this. But on the other hand, the freshwater and the coastal areas of wetlands, so the aquatic agriculture, wetlands and the watersheds, uh, we can see also in, in the Bangladesh and the surrounding other countries. So wetlands are not only using one uh, purpose, it is also multi-purpose uh, using. So this is a playing a potential role at the ecosystem protection as well as the food security. This uh, scenario can show this, uh, the, um, the, the <clears throat> benefits of the wetlands and how it is uh, using for multi-purpose uh, using. On the other way, wetlands, uh, uh, so socio-cultural environmental impacts is uh, coming. The mangrove uh, processes in mangrove uh, functions and mangrove use and values. So I would like to say this only the values, how mangrove uh, is wetlands is uh, using, uh, showing these uh, values. Stream product of the brown cultivations, extraction of uh, reed, fishing, timber and wood, fuel and energy, salt production, agriculture field, and silviculture and tourism. So these are the direct value we can see from the wetlands in different parts of the world. So it is also the everywhere in Bangladesh or surrounding others or, or this area in the Asia Pacific regions everywhere is happening. So what are the present uh, threats to wetlands? Why wetlands is the threat? Threat uh, the wetlands ecosystems are important habitat for the flora and fauna and hence uh, the national and international importance for conservation. Wetlands can be defined as areas of a high groundwater environment that are characterized by the permanent shallow water bodies or temporary inundations or soil uh, having uh, hydric properties. They provide a number of critical ecological functions, including uh, the regulation of the water reserves and support a significant percentage of the world's biodiversity that uh, have adapted to the life of saturated condition. Wetland ecosystem depends on the water level, as you, uh, therefore climate change, uh, climate change and the precipitation is likely to have a significant uh, role over there for, the, for threatening of the wetlands all over the world. So now I, I think of wetlands, we can would like to say, enter in the definition of the concept of the watershed. Watershed actually, what is the watershed or the definition of the watershed? The term watershed was used for the divide of a drainage basin since the United Nations Conference on the Water at Mar del Plata, Argentina in 1977. However, the term watershed has come to mean also the drainage basin itself. This is our Free University of Berlin, or one professor developed this model, we can say the, the watershed. These, uh, we can see these the uh, the model of the water watershed on the other way water watershed is defined as a, any surface area from which a runoff resulting from the rainfall is collected and the drainage through a common point it is a synonym uh, synonym with a drainage basin or catchment area on the other way we can also consider the basin area um, the watershed is also the river catchment area it is similar area, the same area we can consider. So the features of the watershed, the features is uh, the drainage uh, divide or the watershed boundary, such as a mountain range. The, uh, this uh, play a role because uh, it helps uh, in determining uh, whether the water in the watershed is uh, flowing towards or away from an area. The next features in the topography or terrain of the watershed's land. It, uh, if the area is a steep, the water there is likely to flow 
quickly and the cause of flooding and erosion. Whereas the flat watersheds have often had a slower flowing the rivers. On the other way, we can see the, water, the world watershed distribution. These are the nicer scenario of the river distribution, river uh, basin area distribution of the catchment of the main river in different parts of the world are showing this. But now uh, there's climate change, the human influence, anthropogenic uh, uh, disturbance, as well as these development activities, construction are damaging some part of everywhere are every country's watershed, as well as here in Brunei and Bangladesh and other parts of the world. Watershed and the drainage system in the Africa. So watershed, this is a one nice uh, uh, view of the African colorful the map, color, the, the diversity of the map uh, and the people and the nature and the, the biodiversity on this also river. The most uh, uh, five or more uh, largest uh, river basin of the river watershed. So we can see the Nile River which is at six, more than around the 7,000 kilometers long. This is, a red, uh, this is the Nile River area and the catchment area, more than 3,200 square thousand square kilometer area. And the Congo River, the 7,400 uh, square kilometer, this is the Congo River. And the Congo River basin area, or the catchment area, the whole area. And the Niger River Delta, this is a Niger River and uh, the White Nile and the G G and uh, Jambeji River Delta, this area, Jambeji River catchment area. So this watershed actually, uh, the Jambe uh, Congo River actually representing 13 person land area of the Africa. So Congo River or the Congo Basin is a potential for different purposes, not only the watershed, it's also the another, uh, uh, another way representing the rainforest. Rainforest only three locations we can find at the, the rainforest later is coming. So it is also the uh, uh, good area or the fertile area for the Congo Basin area. So Congo Basin or Niger Basin and the Nile River Basin is uh, the watershed gradually is uh, reducing because in Africa more the water crisis is uh, one of the important uh, issue and climate change is another new threat. These are two largest, uh, 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 the lake, Lake Victoria and uh, Lake Chad, Chad already reducing for the area and the depthness. So water is a very important and the potential issue for the Africa irrigation development and communication, but it is a huge crisis in generally, as well as it is a crisis for the climate change issue at the moment. So the types of the uh, watershed, watershed is, uh, is uh, called a major drainage divide. In this uh, situation, water on each side of the boundaries do not meet uh, via the same river or the stream, but they do reach uh, the same ocean. For example, uh, there is a drainage divide between the Yellow River, Muhanghu River Basin and the Yangji River in China, but both river the same outlay. The final, I will show this, uh, the, this uh, next slide. The final types of the drainage divide they called a, a minor drainage divide. In these uh, uh, waters separate at the divide, but uh, later re re rejoin. An example of uh, this uh, situation is uh, shown with uh, the Mississippi and the Missouri rivers. And as more or less similarly, we can say the Ganges and the Brahmaputra River actually created more or less in the same area, but uh, later they join in the Bangladesh and enter in the last point in the Bay of Bengal. So, so these types of water state, we can see different types of the role and the behavior and the character. The significance of the water state by studying the key water state features in addition to the activities along our waterways scientists, other researchers, and city governors can work on the keep them healthy because a small change in one portion of the watershed can change or damage a bigger portion of the other part of the world. This is why always I say, don't disturb the rivers. River can flow in the river in the natural way. The river, if you disturb or, uh, uh, or remove this uh, channel of the rivers or remove the uh, channel uh, of the watershed, it will take revenge later, not this generation, maybe next generation, or over 50 years later, or 100 years later. 
this is even religiously also say the similar thing and scientists also talking the same thing don't destroy the river channel or the river movement or river flowing pattern or river um, the shade, uh, water shed. So on the other hand, uh, the watershed in Europe, this is a very fantastic and the wonderful uh, uh, watershed uh, system over there. The main day. Dr. Islam, two minutes more, please. Okay. Okay, I think uh, uh, we can see the Asian the mega, mega rivers or the mega deltas. 14 mega deltas are actually waiting there already distributed surrounding these uh, Himalayas or the Tibetan uh, place. Almost all rivers uh, are sources, water sources is here, but uh, they already entered in the sea in different parts and created a wetlands or watershed. And uh, this is the river system in the, in the Asian seas. In the watershed, we can see the Canada. It is also the 2 million lakes and 9% of the area in Canada. It is uh, covering the watershed and wetlands are covering 16% land area in the over in the Canada. So I think I would like to uh, covering the, the one case in the Brunei, the watershed and the river system and the civilization. This is, a, I am here located in Brunei, the Bondo Vega one. This is a watershed, but the watershed is changing. The land, uh, wetland is also changing. This is a river. This is a main old city on the water and the watershed. This actually now changing, the changing and this view how the landscape, the natural view and natural and development and construction changing the watershed and the wetlands and everything. This is one small country, but it is also happening here. So I'd like to say two, two minutes, I needed to world forest distributions. We can see this five location forests are distributed in general. The 4.03 billion hectares are approximately the forest area. This is how we can just see how the, this forest area in the uh, the this uh, five location this uh, northern area this uh, uh, the the asia pacific region congo basin amazon basin and the north american basin and canada area this is at the main forest is located we can see the uh, russian federation are covering 2.1 percent of the forest area and uh, canada covering 12 percent and the lowest is the uh, Peru 1%, and India is the 1.80%, Indonesia is the 2.3%, let us say the US is 7.6%, Canada covering 8.5%, uh, and all other uh, world is uh, covering only 30.9% forest area. On the other hand, I would like to say the, uh, the deforestation is one of the regions and the forest fire is one of the regions for the forest reducing and the agriculture farm extension, uh, urbanization and development of the uh, settlement development. As well on the similarly, this is a challenge of the wetland watershed and the forest, how the agroforestry land and the wetlands land are gradually changing for different regions. And sometimes it is a getting as a dry or degraded landscape and as well as desert lands because of this region. I would like to say this only say the rainforest locations Actually, rainforest is a 1.84 million uh, billion hectares of the rainforest. These are three locations. This is a Indo Burma or the Borneo locations. This is a we can a rainforest only over. This is a, the, the again the, the Congo basin area and Amazon basin area. So these are actually three regions in the middle or the equatorial zone the, is uh, the, uh, playing a potential role of the rainforest, and it is a it is a unique forest and diverse, diverse biodiversity uniqueness. So we should have protect this, but how we can protect? This is a question. We needed to conserve this or protect this and need a participatory management. So this is also the Amazon. Actually, on the other hand, for the rainforest, Amazon Basin actually lost this, the 30% forest already lost. Congo Basin only 6.1% already lost. Australasia 1.3 and uh, Sunderland is at 10.4%, Indo Burma 3.6%, West Africa almost 1%, and rest only 3.7% rainforest already disappeared or de already due to the deforestated or due to the development activities. So we can see the watershed in the wetlands and the forest. We can see the major biomes of the world. How wonderful to this uh, our world if we see this uh, GIS application. It's a really wonderful nature, but we needed to 
combination of the water set of wetland and the forest, how we can protect this, how we can conserve this, how we can manage this. We need the all people participation. This I am almost finished one minute, two slides. So this is, I think I propose this, the integrated management of wetland and water set and the forest. What is the main, main factors of the natural resources? Main factors, we can see the soil, waters and vegetation and the wildlife. If it is uh, we can protect this, actually we needed to protect our soil, we protect our vegetations, we protect our wildlife, and we protect our water resources, either wetlands, a river system, or, uh, or the watershed. Then yeah, as a whole, we can manage as an integrated management is possible. Then we can say it would be the nature, um, natural resource management is possible when we can protect these uh, four sectors of the, of the nature. And uh, finally, I would like to see the participatory natural resource management and sustainability, how it is possible. Actually, all the, the institutions, they are considering, I think, natural resource management and sustainability is possible when we consider the institutional support, law and orders. This should be very strongly into, introduced. We can see the, the uh, Commonwealth countries, I think 52 countries, they are always following, most of the countries following Forest Act. 1934, the British already developed this. This still as practicing. Even in Brunei, it is also the same same rules, Forest Act 1934, um, and even India, Bangladesh, Malaysia, and all. So this is, we needed institutional support, the law and order, or every country, or every region, and planning and the policy support. Whatever the modern policy or the participatory uh, policy we need, we need uh, under this, all things I noted need to explain, the planning and the policy support, and the landscape at the land use and biodiversity support. Land use also needs the protection. Landscape also needs the protections and biodiversity needed to support how to protect our biodiversity. And livelihood support, because some people are dependent, so indigenous people or the forest people depends on the natural resource. Also, we needed to support them by we need to balance nature and the people. This is a UNESCO also now working or United Nations working. The, the, Nature should be depend on the uh, people. People also depends on the nature. The biosphere reserve for these types of activities strongly practice this. Uh, organizational support. This is also another thing not to consider. This is that I propose strongly the indigenous support. This indigenous support, indigenous people, knowledge and practice. They have it's a long experience. They can do this. This is actually one example. Beijing, I was working in the Mexico forest area. This was a long time where this uh, debate with the government and indigenous people. But uh, recently, government already approved their demand. So they hand over the land of the forest land to the indigenous people. Now in Mexican uh, forest area is safe because of the biodiversity also safe because of they are practicing. They are not destroying now. But before they were uh, aggressively destroyed this. So these types of these uh, seven support we need this and practice this, then it's a possible participatory natural resource management and sustainability is possible, is possible when the parties, owners, producers, and stakeholders will jointly practice, they strictly follow the, this type of support or model. Then we can see uh, uh, participatory natural resource management and sustainability is possible. So, but we have to practice this. So I would like to say only conclude this, the wetland ecosystem and importance habitats in flora and fauna hence at the national and international importance for the convention, uh, conservation. The international convention and the treaties are necessary because of the con, uh, conservation and wise use of all wetlands, watershed and forest resources through local, regional and uh, national actions and international cooperation as well as contribution towards achieving sustainable development through the world. So I need to, to people's participation, owners and indigenous knowledge practices, not only the others, uh, others ideas or theory apply, but we need the people ideas ap application and the stakeholders, not only like it, uh, uh, Pantanal the wetlands in Brazil, but this product of the Pantanal wetlands are available in Brunei market. That's mean we are also the stakeholder. We should think about wherever these, these uh, natural resources, but we are responsible for everybody. So need a people's participation. That could be the solution for the uh, participatory natural resource management. Thank you very much for your timing and uh, for attention.
Thank you, Dr. Islam. Thank you for your presentation.